Hello YouTube and welcome to an exclusive World of Football movie review. That's right. The two worlds of mine are melding into one. Uh, <laughs> football, film, my favorite. Uh, we got to see a movie early, didn't we, Mr. Yes. Randy? Yes, uh, you got us early tickets a week before the movie came out, an exclusive at our local theater here. And uh, I was very happy that you did that. Yeah, and uh, because of that, we're going to... Uh, replace our typical tuesday podcast with this review uh so if you're wondering where the podcast is on tuesday uh well it's a day late because the nfl this week obviously has had some covid issues so some games got delayed till tuesday so the podcast i'm sure you've already made the announcement on social media somewhere uh, or you will by the time i will right after we're done here <laughs> as soon as the video goes up or when the video goes up people have seen it hopefully and so we decided to push the podcast of day back so we we're thinking about doing this review during the podcast but because of the circumstances it's just worked out that we're gonna get this up we'll replace the podcast tuesday and then yep. uh podcast will go up wednesday and then our normal picks video will maybe get up thursday now that everything's delayed that might throw me off a day might go up friday i don't know yet yeah we'll see how that works uh i'll have time to get it up <laughs> thursday night that's for darn sure because that's christmas eve but mm -hmm. um actually yeah i could get it up thursday never mind it's christmas <laughs> no wait it's not christmas eve christmas eve is friday never mind I this, still don't know. This whole week's going to be a mess. Oh, it's a mess. Happy holidays, everybody. <laughs> Happy holidays. Like I said, we're here to review the brand new uh, Kurt Warner biopic, American Underdog. Uh, so I'm very excited. I already reviewed it over on my YouTube channel. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, I do have my own YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> maybe there's a picture or something up there. I don't know what I'm going to do in post yet. <laughs> but uh, go check that out if you want. But here, we're just going to have a nice little discussion about it. We're going to get Randy's thoughts on it. Because this is the world of football, and we do like our football movies. So uh, maybe every time we get a football movie out, maybe we'll stop and discuss a new football sure. movie just yeah. uh, for fun. Yep. Change things up. So uh, where do you want to start? Um, start off with, uh, we've, we've known about this movie for a while. We were very excited about this yes. movie because uh, I personally was really looking forward to seeing arena football on the big screen that was always our like backdoor like the only way we're ever going to see arena football in on the big screen is probably if it's a kurt warner movie mm -hmm. and for years we've been kind of waiting like are they ever going to do it and when they finally said they were going to do it we're like here we go fingers crossed they show a lot of arena football yeah they didn't show as much as i would have liked but uh, what they did show was pretty good yeah i yes. thought it was a very accurate portrayal um i talked about it in my review a lot of the like in something you brought up is the timeline was fudgy but yeah. we'll we'll get into that i'm right. sure right. um i don't know if you have any of the particulars on hand uh so the film stars zachary levi as our lead character slash real person uh kurt warner um and his wife brenda is played by anna paquin and then you got some other notables uh you had dennis quaid playing uh dick vermeil the head coach of the st louis rams in in the 90s and then um Oh, gosh, I already forgot his name. I had it at one point, uh, who played Mike Martz. And give me a second, I'll pull all that but, up. But just uh, like you were saying uh, before, Zachary Levi looks so much like Kurt Warner. And when you see pictures of Anna Paquin and Brenda Warner, they do look so much alike. Right. It's, it's almost like they're playing themselves in the movie. Ch Chance Kelly, by the way, played Mike Martz, the offensive coordinator okay. for the Rams. And then um, some other notable football figures you might be familiar with uh, who are portrayed. Bruce McGill played Jim Foster, the creator of the Arena yep. Football League. Yep. And then you had Hayden Zaller, who played Zach Warner, uh, Brenda and Kurt's uh, oh, yes. son. Yes. I thought he did a fantastic yes, job. Yes, he did. Uh, you had an actor named O.J. Keith Simpson playing <laughs> Marshall Falk. <laughs> Uh, and an actor named Nick Harris playing Ray Lewis. So Ray Lewis got a little bit of screen time in this movie mm -hmm. as well. And I believe those are some of the big notables from the movie there. Yeah. So yep. I thought it was a good cast overall. Uh, I do like Zachary Levi. I'm very familiar with him from uh, some of, well, a couple of the Thor movies. He was uh, Shazam in mm. the Shazam movie that yeah. came out and its yep. sequel coming out. So I like Zachary Levi. I think he's charming. He's a lot of fun. He does a lot of cool stuff on social media. Anna Paquin from uh, the X-Men movies is what I'm familiar uh, mm. with her work. Uh, I thought she was great in this. She's one of the standout performers, yeah. if not the standout performers of the movie. Nothing yeah. against anybody else, but she brought it. And I was really taken with uh, Hayden Zaller as or Zaller as uh, Zach Warner. I th he, yep. he's, he's probably my favorite. I thought he did a real good job. 
and I didn't know this going in, but he was he's actually uh blind and uh that was a, a very good portrayal of Zach. They showed some footage of Zach after the film yep. and I thought that was real uh, touching and heartwarming there. Yeah, I didn't know that he was actually I thought he was just, you know, playing a blind person, but the the young man is actually blind yeah. uh, as uh, Kurt Warner's son in real life. And so, yeah, it, it just added something to the movie. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, so, again, cast, great. Uh, the directors here are, uh, it's a brother duo, Andrew Irwin and John Irwin. Uh, the script written by John Irwin, David Aaron Cohen, and John Gunn. So uh, I think these guys did a pretty decent job at, portraying arena football a lot of the i think a lot of the football scenes worked Mm -hmm. and it was interesting how they integrated uh the real life footage with the stuff on the yeah uh, you know in the movie yeah that was the first thing that that really caught me is uh, when they uh, got around to uh, the arena football stuff uh they were showing uh, arena football 10 which kurt warner played in that was his first season and they showed some actual footage and the three commentators were todd christensen and Her, Kirk Herbstreet, yep. they were in the booth, and Mike Golick Sr. was the sideline reporter. Yeah. And they showed actual footage of them at the game back in uh, 1996. So right. That was, that was awesome. Yeah. Uh, Todd Christensen, uh, one of my favorites, he played a game show host on Married with Children. Mm. So uh, <laughs> that's that's where I remember him most from. I remember him as a, as a football player too. But right. you know, Kirk Herbstreet, he's still around today doing college football oh, yeah. game day. And, and Mike Golick, you know, Mike and Mike and... You know, everybody knows Mike. Yeah, he's gone on to uh, do some other stuff now that he's left ESPN, but right. still a presence out there in the sports world. Right. I think all the sports cameos they got in here, or blinking, you miss it. I know I blinked and I missed uh, one of my favorite arena football players of all time, if not the greatest arena football player of all time. Sorry, Mr. Warner. That's Clint Dolzell, <laughs> which uh, who played for our Grand Rapids Rampage yes. for three seasons. Yeah, you didn't catch this. I, I had didn't to... catch it. I, th- I went back and watched the trailer, and I saw him in it, and I was like, oh, there he is. You don't like it when I lean over in the movie theater and tell you something about it. the movie, and I was going to point he out, so oh, my loud. God, there's Clint Dolzell. He's That's sitting exactly how he sounds. Mike Everybody Marks. in the theater can hear him. <laughs> so you can but, see why that bothers me. But no, I instantly recognized him, and... Uh, uh, maybe it's because I, I have this bobblehead. Oh, my God. Clint Dolezal. This is uh, when he was with the Grand Rapids Rampage. This is the Arena Bowl trophy, something Kurt Warner did not win. But, uh, yes, uh, Clint Dolezal was in the movie. I confirmed that in the credits at the end. They yeah. listed him as a football consultant on the movie. He didn't have a speaking part, but he was there in, in a few scenes. Um and uh, instantly recognizable. Somebody else I saw in the credits, David Baker, uh, was mm. in the credits, who was the AFL commissioner for several years, oh, and was... also I, he wasn't in the film, oh, but I think he was like Pro- yeah, probably a consultant, right? Yeah. As someone who helped out on the film, uh, you know, and, and he went on to be the uh, president and CEO of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Just recently retired, uh, and like you said. <laughs> As the names are going by O.J. Simpson as Marshall Falk, and I right. just thought that was so odd to see that. Yeah, he, but, that's how he's listed in the right. movie. I think in, like I said, I found the credits here, and he was, what did I say, O.J. Uh, uh, yeah, he had a middle name or something. Yeah, he had a middle name in there, O.J., and give me two seconds to bring it back up, O.J. Keith Simpson. Mm, so okay. that's how he's listed on the internet, but interesting, and I guess we'll get things back on the rails because, yes, okay, we got our Rampage stuff out of the way. <laughs> get back on the rails here. So you mentioned David Baker, and you mentioned or we, we suspect that he was, his involvement was more in getting things accurate or, you know, helping them. Right. Uh, answering questions. They answering questions had. and you know, helping put things to screen the way they – as close as how they happened as possible. Mm-hmm. So uh, we did have some other Rita football teams pop up in this movie, and right. I thought uh, – all the jerseys, all the uh, stuff around that was portrayed accurately. Logos, helmets, jersey patches were all mm-hmm. nailed in the arena football stuff, I believe. I'm sure maybe uh, a more astute uh, person, especially somebody who runs like, oh, say, arena fan, uh, <laughs> dot com. Right. Uh, but no, the, the uh, Iowa Barnstormer uniforms, uh, they had the 10th anniversary because right. it was Arena Bowl 10. It was the 10th year of the arena football, right. and they had a 10th anniversary uh, patch on their uniforms yeah. and we'll get to that in just a second okay. i do want to right. mention that but so so here's the teams that we saw in the movie besides the iowa barnstormers whose mini helmet i see you have on the desk there uh yeah nice little iowa barnstormers mini helmet they haven't changed it they're still around today yeah. and they haven't changed that helmet at yes. all um but uh sadly the arena football league is not around today uh the connecticut coyotes mm-hmm. uh were 
a team featured. The Albany Firebirds were featured twice, both on the road and at home, because mm-hmm. I th- I did notice in the background of the Albany Firebirds home games uh, scene that they had uh, the proper uh, team logo in the not in the rafters, but it was like hanging up underneath the scoreboard or whatever. Okay. So I thought that okay, I was like cool. They at least got that. I don't know if that was exactly how it looked at the time, but that logo was accurate to that time period. Then we had also the Memphis Pharaohs. Uh, you say up. it was the Memphis Pharaohs, but I'm not positive. It I'm, is the Memphis Pharaohs. When I buy this DVD, and I will, and I go through it frame by frame, I will have you to... You could go through the trailer, and it was confirmed it was the Memphis Pharaohs. You're sure? So okay. I'm I, sure I, did, I did not see that. I think Arena Fan also uh, did a good job. Mr. Tim Capper, I think, mm-hmm. probably went through and uh, already confirmed that. So okay. you can talk to him about that. Okay. But, so, God, we're spending so much time on Arena Football uh, and don't don't get me wrong, I love talking to Rita football, but right. we probably should get off it. But we do want to mention real quick, yes, there were some slight uh, tweaks they had to do to the story, which right. is understandable. They made it seem like Kurt Warner only played a year in the Arena Football League when, in fact, he played two, two seasons. Because yep. uh, they showed him playing in Arena Bowl 10, but, in fact, he also played in Arena Bowl 9. So No, 11. Is it What? Hold on. No, 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 no. It was yeah. 9 and 10. No, it's 10 and 11. you got to be kidding me. Okay, 10 and 11. Yes. Uh, okay, there we go, because everything was backwards. That's why. Okay, so we showed him playing in Arena Bowl 10, and then that was it. Right. But he did, in fact, play another season after that Arena Bowl and went to the Arena Bowl again. Right. Uh, they lost both the Arena Bowls yes, uh, the did. first time around to the Tampa Bay Storm, which you see in the movie, and then the second time around they lost uh, pretty bad to the Arizona Rattlers yeah. uh, in uh, Arena Bowl 11. So, And Roman numerals are hard to read sometimes. Okay, get off my back. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, just little stuff like that that you have to expect going into a based on a true story movie. Because they got to change some stuff. they got to streamline the story just so you, people get the gist of it. Mm-hmm. So, it, it also makes it interesting to go back to and be like, all right, what was left out? Why was it left out? Mm-hmm. Um, what am I missing to the full picture? Because you get, you get enough of the picture to understand everything and connect with it. But uh, I thought what they left out was necessary. Mm-hmm. Did we need to see him play two seasons in arena football? Probably no, not. No. Do we need like they totally skipped over? I mentioned this in my review. They totally skipped over NFL Europe. Yes, which is yes. fine. Um, so, you know, I think they did a good job. They put everything in there that I think was necessary. There wasn't a whole lot I thought could be taken out, other than some uh, stuff that was happening in real life. I was like, okay, he had a lot of bad stuff happen around him and right. his family, yeah. and not that you know, it's like, oh, don't show all of it. Like, well, I think. They, some of the stuff was kind of not a rehash because it was real life. You can't rehash real life. But I was like, well, you could have d- done without one of these things, and it still would have been the same impact. So well, that's just me and my film critiquing brain. Yeah. Well, I was I was looking this, at this as a football movie. It's right. not really a football movie. No. It is uh, an inspirational movie. It's kind of a love story that uh, football kind of just weaves in and, and out. Football. Of. Yep. Football comes in and out. And, like the uh, shark from Jaws. <laughs> And uh, this this was a very good movie. I really enjoyed this movie. I'd been looking forward to it. It did not disappoint me. I I liked it a lot. There were times when it was a little bit slow in parts, and and it was maybe a little bit long. Um, it was. I th- I think the runtime was only two hours. Okay. Which shocked me. Like I said in in uh, my other review, I thought it was like it felt three hours long. Mm. I felt like. It was an hour and a half before they ever got to the arena football stuff, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I didn't mind it too much. I mean, no. you, you could you could kind of feel that it was long and, and maybe dragged in a few parts, but I was fascinated by everything. Yeah, I did not know that Brenda Warner had been in the military; she right. was in the Marine Corps, which I, I never knew that. Right, and uh, so yeah, there was, I learned some things from this movie. Uh, other things, like we said, we we said, well, they they missed this, they missed that, but overall, it was a, an excellent movie, uh, very inspirational. The kind of movie that says, even though people are telling you you're not good enough, uh, you just keep trying and you see what happens. And that's exactly what Kurt Warner did. He was turned down, you know, by the Green Bay Packers, and uh, he, you know, had a lot of walls put up in front of him. But you know, he went where he could. He kept fighting for what he wanted, and he eventually, you know, he made it to the NFL, um, made it to a, a Super Bowl, became a Super Bowl MVP. He actually played in three Super Bowls over his co- over the course of his career, right. and. Uh, you know, so uh, it's the it's the ultimate rags to riches story, and it was it was really really good. Um, of course, you know, I was looking at it from oh yeah, he came from the Arena Football League, so that was that was the main thing that I wanted to to see in this movie, and those parts were good. 
so yeah overall I, it was really good i encourage anyone and everyone to to go see this movie when it comes out on christmas day right yeah I, this is something for the whole family mm -hmm. i think if you're a yep. football fan and you you're familiar with the true story I, I don't think the story will give you anything like out of a typical you know like you said rags to riches story like it's it's that typical you know how it's going to end kind of thing but it's the journey that right. is the important part not the destination even though the destination is like a one in a billion chance, you know, for for a guy. They they really highlighted at the opening of the movie that, you know, as a kid, you know, Kurt Warner's watching uh, Joe Montana play, and uh, he they mentioned you know this many people play college football, this many get into the NFL, this many can win, you know, go to the playoffs, this many can go to a Super Bowl, and this many can go and win MVP MVP <laughs> of the Super Bowl. So, like, just you, you hear those numbers, and you're like, yeah, those are some big staggering odds. Yeah. And, you know, to see Kurt Warner's journey to get to that point that we all know he inevitably gets to is fantastic. And I think they capped the story off at the right spot. I think the Super Bowl MVP with yep. the Rams is where you yep. cap the movie off, which is what they did. And, of course, they highlight everything else that happened in his Hall of Fame career after that. Right. Um, so... Still one of the best Hall of Fame induction speeches oh, yeah, I've Kurt ever Warner, heard. Yeah, Kurt Warner, great. They, they give you a little taste of that in the movie, yes. too. Um, but, I mean, you can go to the Hall of Fame, you know, profootballhalloffame.com. You can watch his entire speech uh, the, the day that he was inducted, and it was it was fantastic. He mentioned the Arena Football League and, and everything that he had to do to get where he was. Uh, that was a great speech, one of, one of the best I've heard in a long time. Yeah, so I think this, you know, is this a... In terms of, of film, is it the best movie you're going to see all year? Probably not. Is it enjoyable? Yes. I think this, like I said, family, take the whole family around Christmas to go see it. It's got great messages in it. Uh, the football is a great added bonus yep. to it and something that if you're an arena football fan, you know, you'll know you appreciate. And if you're not an arena football fan, it's something that you'll see the game and how yeah. we see the game. I think that does a real good job of displaying the game, how we've seen it for right. our lifetime or well, as long as we've watched the read of football but you know like i think it it was faithful to that aspect of it and uh like i said i felt the football stuff was really intimate uh from his college stuff to his nfl stuff pretty yeah. intimate they did a real good job there's some stuff you know i talked about inaccuracies i and i spoke about it in my review so i'll just lightly touch on sure the rams played on astro turf but when they showed him in the movie they're playing on field turf whatever i guess you could get over it uh that was just something that I, you know bugged me slightly not enough to be like this movie's a piece of crap because of it so um yeah i like i like the movie though yeah well a, a lot of people you know will know kurt warner only from the nfl the st louis rams and they they have heard the story yeah he came from the arena football league but they a lot of people maybe have never even seen uh highlights or watched the game been to a game in person i mean we were season ticket holders for what was it uh, about eight years uh and uh you know, we love the game, but I think a lot of people who like Kurt Warner will look at this film and they'll go, so that's what arena football was all about. You know, those were the teams. The, these are the uniforms. This is how it was played. Um, you know, they portrayed it as Kurt having a hard time adjusting to the arena football game because it's so fast. Mm -hmm. You know, you take one or two steps and you throw the ball. You know, you just, you can't hold on to it because you're going to get sacked and, you know, your your receivers are only open for a split second. And he learned. He got mm -hmm. better and... uh you know, I went to Arena Fan and I got some of the stats. In 1996, he led the Iowa Barnstormers to a 12 and 2 record. Um, and as you said, they lost the Tampa Bay Storm in the uh, final game, which was played in Iowa. Warner that season completed 259 out of 422 passes for 3,336 yards and 61 touchdowns that season. 15 interceptions, and he had a passer rating of 107.5. Now, in 97, he led the team to an 11-3 and record. They lost the uh, Arizona Rattlers in Arizona. That season, Warner completed 322 of 498 passes, almost 500 passes he threw that season, uh, for 4,149 yards, 79 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, and had a passer rating of 118.5. Now, in the movie, they showed how uh, he got a $100 bonus for every touchdown that he played or that he threw. So one season, he got $6,100 on top of his salary for all those touchdowns, and the next year, he got $7,900 on top of his salary. So uh, that was that was something I didn't know, that he had a bonus for nah. 
for throwing well, how, a touchdown. How okay? Like that's one of the parts I was like, did that really happen? Was he just handing him cash on the sidelines? I doubt it. But... If if that was true, then that's how much money he made each true, season true. from doing that. True, true. <laughs> just based on that movie logic, right, yeah. Right. But again, movie they you know uh, really accentuate certain things or sure. blow things up a little out of proportion, but. Whatever, it made it entertaining, and I, I was okay with that. And, like, you you wrote here a note that Jim Foster, they show him in the movie, but they show Jim Foster as not only the owner of the team, but as the coach yeah, of the, the team. Yeah, the head coach. Which is also not accurate. No, no. The head coach of the team was John Gregory, who actually had uh, coached up in Canada, but he was a, a great coach. I actually got to meet John Gregory once when I was covering uh, the How would you like to be him and get left out of this movie? Yeah, of that? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Be but, a vital part in Kurt's story, and they yeah. just merge his character right. with uh, right. the owner yeah. of the team. That's, that's Again, amazing. one of those things that movies have to do sometimes. I mean, the Jim Foster character was great. I mean, he he created the game. He came up with the concept. He started the league, and and then uh, you know he he was a commissioner of the league for a while, and then he stepped back from that, and he wanted to to own a team, so he started the Iowa Barnstormers because he's from Iowa, just like Kurt Warner, and uh, yeah. It, but John uh, Gregory was the head coach of yeah. the team. Um, and Kurt Warner was inducted into the Arena Football League Hall of Fame in 2017. Uh, like you said before, the, the team still exists, but uh, it's now the Iowa Barnstormers are a member of the Indoor Football League. Right. But they're and still tried, out there. I tried real hard to not make this all about Arena Football. Okay, <laughs> I tried. I know we're a football podcast slash YouTube channel, and that's going to go without saying that we'll talk a lot about the football aspects of it. Um, but I tried real hard to make it more about the movie review, so don't don't. I'm sorry. I'm all about football history. I know you so. are, so we're, we're trying to meet that balance. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you want to talk about about this movie? Um, I I don't think so. I, I nothing I, else you want to get off your chest about it? No, I, I like I said, I really enjoyed it. I love the arena football sequences. The NFL sequences were good. I did not realize that Steve Mariucci was the one that cut him from the Green Bay Packers. And you you picked on a you picked oh, yeah, on, I knew that on like that as right soon as it happened, I knew who that was. But we stayed after, and because this was a special uh, sneak preview, uh, we stayed after the credits and. They had what a twenty it was like thirty a 20 minute. minutes worth of uh, bonus features, right? Kind of things. Interviews with the actors and and other things, and so we learned some stuff there. And that's when uh, we learned that uh, that was Steve Mariucci's character. That's when you learned it was Steve wow. Mariucci. <laughs> Like how you picked on, uh, picked up Clint Dolzell well, in the movie. Talk, if you'd let me talk to you in the movie, I would have found that out sooner. Again, I don't need somebody whispering <laughs> loud into the theater at me. I don't need that in my movie theater experience. Uh, so, I, I loved seeing Clint Dolzell on there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's what these sports movies that they find. They get these nice little cameos that guys like us will appreciate. Like mm. the average Joe won't be like, "Oh, that's." Clint Dolezal, but us Rampage fans are like, yeah. we know who that is. Went on to be the head coach of the Philadelphia Soul for many years. Won an arena bowl with them, uh-huh. and uh, <laughs> recently he's been coaching in the Indoor Football League. Mm. So, we love you, Clint. <laughs> I love you a lot. Come back to Grand Rapids. Bring a team back. Really? Please. Yes. Uh, yeah, now we're off the rails. Um, but yeah, so we don't really give grades. We're not going to give a grade here. Uh, that's just not what we do. All we know is... Did we just want you to know? Did we like the movie or did we not like the movie? And Randy, did you like the movie? I liked the movie. How I, much did you like the movie? I I I assumed I was going to like it. I was hoping I wouldn't be disappointed with it, but I was not. Uh, I liked it. Uh, I'm going to give it uh, four footballs out of five. Oh God, we're not doing that. I'm not putting that graphic up. <laughs> that ain't happening. But it was very good. I it really, was very really good. liked it. Good enough to buy it on Blu-ray. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I liked it a collection. lot. Um, this might be one I buy, maybe not like the day it comes out. I like it a lot though. Um, it'll definitely be in the collection at some point, but I think it's worth seeing. And I think seeing it on the big screen, especially for the football sequences, yes. that's where you want to see these type of things. Is in the theater. Get you probably don't have an IMAX screening of this, but whatever. Get get in the theater. I won't say sit front row because then you will really feel like you're <laughs> at a football game. I'd say you know, sit as close to the theater as your theater. Sit as close to the screen as you feel comfortable. And just soak in the football. And like I said, his life story is interesting. It's mm-hmm. emotional. You'll probably take some tissues with you. There was a couple of times where I <laughs> yeah. I got a little teared up because I yeah. was like, dang, like I knew he had it rough, but this rough. So, uh, yeah, I I fully endorse this movie. This is a world of football endorsed movie. So <laughs> uh, we're not going to Roger Eber and Sis. Yeah, we're not going to give this thumbs up or not. Just go see it. It's good. <laughs> so that's it for, I guess, our... I'd say it was a review for the movie, but it turned into Randy just lo- loving on the Arena Football League being on the big screen. <laughs> That's what it turned into. Um, so, yeah. So, hopefully you guys go out and check it out. Uh, are you guys excited about the movie? 
uh, if you've seen this after the movie's come out, what'd you think of the movie? Uh, leave your comments and all that stuff down below. We love to hear your guys' feedback on it. And uh, maybe we'll do some more football movie review. Well, we'll actually review the movie, hopefully, in the future. <laughs> we just won't gush over the arena football <laughs> part of it. So, yeah. So, anything else before we sign no. off? No, I'm good. I'm going to shut up right, now. Guy, he's gonna st- all right. Uh, please remember to check out our weekly podcast this week in the world of football available on all podcast platforms pretty much. Uh, you, if you're watching this, you've already found us on YouTube. Hit that like uh, and subscribe button on the video. Uh, it really helps us out as well. Share it with your friends. Or, or you know, if people are on the fence about going to see that movie with you, send them our review and they'll <laughs> see how much we gushed over this thing. <laughs> so until next time, everybody, we'll be seeing you.